I'm going to have to hand you off to Brandon, Brendan now. Ugh, no. No one's around to serve up the usuals for their next day. No. No. I don't want to deal with this asshole. You know what? What if I, like, can fuck this asshole? Hey, yo, guys. We're continuing with the England Exchange. I'll get you guys some Sims videos when I feel like it. Yeah. I don't know when that's gonna be. It's probably gonna be tomorrow or something. I'm just trying to. <laughs> I just hit my phone with my fidget spinner. This thing is dangerous. Um, I'm probably just gonna get some easy videos out to get like used to the commentary and uploading thing, and then I'll get into the Sims. Yeah. It was a goofy name, but I was. Oh, la, 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 la. why I didn't? Okay, I'm sorry. That's my Skype. I'm just gonna mute these fuckers. I was a little afraid of what I could find inside. I gathered my guts and pushed open the polished oak door. The cool scheme, the color, the cool scheme, the fuck. The color scheme left a lot of, to be desired, but the light was warm and the tables and booths gave it a friendly kind of atmosphere. A bar ran around the back wall and there was a woman behind it fiddling with some bottles and preparing drinks. Not just any woman, a blonde whose low cut top looked a whole whole lot better on her than my work uniform did on me. She saw me standing in the doorway and beckoned me forward, a bright smile on her face. You must be the new blood, I'm Ashley. I'm Luke, nice to meet you. I guess we'll be working together. So we will. You're from America, right? I've heard you're not 21 yet, not old enough to serve drinks in your country. Don't worry, I'll show you the ropes in any case, there's no way you'll be worse than. The front door closed and Ashley fell silent. Another man had just entered, wearing the same uniform that I was, though he wore it better. What? Who's this guy? What are you doing here? Caught off guard by both his gruff questions and his American accent, I stammered in reply. Uh, I'm Nuke. I'm I'm Nuke. I'm, I'm Luke. I'm new here. Nice to meet you. I guess we're comrades. Compatriots. Are you fucking kidding me? Compatriots. If I ever said that to someone in America, they would wring my neck and put me on a cross. Or something. Don't get in my way. I want to get in, do the work, and get out. I have no interest in this job or in being American buddies, so don't make my life more difficult than it already is. You won't like what happens if you do. I feel attacked. I've been getting attacked in video games lately. What's up with this? He turned the corner and headed in the back into a back room. So that was Brendan. Don't mind him. He's not a bad, that bad a guy. She gazed after him with a. Not that bad of a guy. He just threatened me when I tried being friendly. He. She gazed after him with a worried look on her face, and I balked. Not that bad a guy, really. She sighed. She sighed. We just broke up, so. Oh, um, I'm sorry. You're not sorry. See, he's not sorry. <laughs> but that meant she was single, right? Don't do it, worry about it, it's over now. Anyways, let me show you how we do things here. She took me to the kitchen in the back, showing me the plates and dish cleaner where we were supposed to put the orders that we took and so on. In no time I was completely confused, not least not least because of all the different names for the foods. What's a gherkin? Um, it's yay long and green. A pickle! But Pickle is brown and comes in jars. What do you call your french fries? Why do you call your french fries chips? Because they're chipped off a potato? Why do you call them French? What do the French ever do for chips? <laughs> she smiled and shook her head, which made her hair and other things sway entertainingly. <laughs> Look, you're embarrassing me. I'm gonna have to hand you off to Brandon, Brendan now. Ugh, no. No one's around to serve up the usuals for their next drink. No! No! I don't want to deal with this asshole. You know what? What if I, like, can fuck this asshole? What if I can, like, go down on him? You can just, like... Yeah. She skipped to the front of the bar and I hesitantly approached Brendan, who was bent over a plate of food. Um, the hell do you want? Stop it! Don't make you feel like this! <laughs> You're supposed to teach me what to do next. Seriously? He glared at me. And he glanced at the plate of food, a slab of meat with some types of sauce on it, and smiled. 
Right, how about you go get a pint of beer from the front and meet me back here? What kind of beer? Just beer, go. I ran to the front, grabbed the first dark glass of beer I saw. Stopped to wave at Ashley as she waved back really cutely. And then I headed back inside. Brendan was standing with the plate in his hands, a sly smile on his face. Take this out to the table in the far back. Guy's a buddy of mine. Give that. Give, him, give me that. Him that, whatever. He took the beer from my hands and began to drink. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to do that while you're working. Are you telling me how to do my job? No. No. Of course not. Good. Now skedaddle. I took the plate to the back table where the man with the thick mustache was waiting. Finally! It's been an age. Um, compliments of Brandon. He said hi. The man gave me a weird look then took the food. I started to head back to the kitchen when... Arg! I don't like this! I jumped and the man at the table screamed. Now he was glaring at me. What is this shit? What? It just delivered the food. What? What is wrong, sir? There are peppers in the sauce. I specifically requested no peppers. I said that I'm allergic to peppers. This is covered in a tiny bits of pepper. Ashley turned pale. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll call 999 right away. Don't bother. It's not that kind of allergy. The other, in other words, he isn't allergic at all. He just doesn't like pepper. Someone deliberately put extra pepper into this dish. Who did you say did this, Brendan? I was going to talk. I'm going to talk to your manager. I'll make sure I get that kid fired if it's the last thing I ever do. He sneered at me and marched out of the room. The remaining customers stared at us in ensuing silence. Then, what the hell did he just say? Brendan came out of the back kitchen. You told him I did that. Well, I thought you said, you little shit, you're dead. No, if I lose my job, you will wish you were dead. I'll make sure that the time you spend here will be absolute hell. Do you hear me? She's just over there smiling like, oh my god, I don't know. This won't be the end of things. Yeah, I'm not gonna go down on him. He might actually beat me instead of fucking me. Um, Brandon dashed out of the room, presumably to catch the man or talk to our boss. Ashley laid her hand on my shoulder. Hey, are you okay? I felt weak on my feet and tried to act as though nothing was wrong. Of course I am. Tough first day, right? Ashley laughed quietly. I didn't join him. Anyways, let's try to finish out the- I thought she said finish out the shift. Fuck. Out the shift. We can worry about everything else later. The rest of the shift went comparatively smoothly. Ashley helped me through my failures, and even though Brennan stayed gone for most of the shift, we weren't too hard pressed for customers. After a few hours, Brendan came back. He said nothing, just went to the back kitchen and resumed work. I assumed that meant he wasn't fired. I really didn't have the guts to ask him. Finally, my shift was over and I head back to the hostel, which wasn't much of an escape, knowing that Brendan lived there too. I sighed and slumped into one of the couches into the hostel's common living room. There wasn't, there was no way I was going to survive here. It was impossible. I might as well go on the next flight home. How am I supposed to deal with constantly seeing someone who practically threatened to kill me? I hung my head. Usually I'd go to the coffee shop or something to chill, but that seemed distinctively unappealing after my work day. Then I heard someone sit down on the couch next to me. I looked up. Whoa. A beautiful woman was sitting next to me and looking at me with a gentle smile. She was so close I could pick up the warm notes of her perfume. Her red dress clung to her curves like they were a lifeline. Hey there, everything alright? Mm -hmm. I instantly sat back, trying to look more like I was in control. Yeah, totally. Uh, who might you be? I'm Asia. I see. Ah, I'm a border here. And you are? Luke, I'm new here. I know. Her smile broadened. I would have noticed if I had seen you here before. Uh, um, where are you from? I'm right here in London. I'm staying here because, well, because I am. She shrugged slightly, but didn't seem too happy. It was probably a sore topic. I'm from America. Really? I couldn't tell. She punched me playfully and I relaxed a little. Anyways, you look like you could use some fun. Are you a partier? Oh, um, I didn't really know how to answer. I might want to be a partier after, but after a day like this, I'm actually still a bit jet lagged and dead tired. Oh, she seemed disappointed. I couldn't help but feel like I had failed somehow in her eyes. Like I was no longer as attractive. But I go partying every now and then. Yeah, you know how things get in the Big Apple. Ever seen? Ever been? Her eyes lit up, and I knew I'd hit the right note. You're from New York. That's brilliant. I wish I 
be able to see a place like that all glamorous and all in focus. You must be an ambitious person. I hear everyone there is on the move. Big money, big buildings, city that never sleeps. Yeah, well, you know, hard work. Work hard, play hard, right? He's such a lame asshole. I'm, he's me. I feel a little bad for lying, but it wasn't technically lying, right? She was making me feel like I was somehow someone cool, someone important. I wanted to keep up that image for her as long as possible. But that was the point of coming to a new country, wasn't it? To reinvent myself and try a new character? To see if I liked the diff liked a different side of life better than my own back home? Maybe it wasn't such a bad thing to shade the truth a little after all. Well, you'll definitely have to come partying with me sometime. I'm sure you'll pull loads of girls. Why would I pull on women? It seemed like a stupid question, so I didn't ask. I'm going out for tonight, but I do hope I'll see you around sometime. She got up and stretched. It was all I could do to control my wandering eyes. Have a good night, Luke. She wiggled her finger at me and smiling left the room. Okay, maybe it wasn't wouldn't be hard to stick around here as I thought. Well, I worked my first shift, made my first enemy, but regardless of what happened today, this was still my trip. It was up to me to make the most of it, both good and bad. I ho I could let people get to me like I usually did, or I can stand up on my own two feet and push through somehow. It was all up to me. And what I wanted to do right now was call my friends back home, get some sleep. I'll call my friends back home. It's been- the time difference between London and New York is about five hours, so it wouldn't be afternoon back home. Heen probably would be home, but Jinsu might be... eh. I only had a small phone card for the national calls. I'd have to buy more minutes later when I got paid, but at least I could say hello. It took me a minute to figure out how to dial a US number from here, but eventually it rang. Luke, is that you? Hey, how's England so far? Um, good and bad. Spotted any hot guys yet? I couldn't help but laughing. Does Danny count? There's this guy in the hostel named Danny, really nice, bailed out me out once I had a problem with the cab getting here. Go on. That's it. He helped me inside. I haven't seen him since. I think he's like that to everyone. She's just nice. Well, keep your eyes open. You never know. We chatted briefly about that I'd seen in- about what I'd seen in London so far. Then he bid me goodnight. I needed my rest. My semester was only just beginning. I was wondering when I was gonna be able to make, like, I love it. Make like choices. The walk back to the university was truly lovely. London was a big city, but just like New York, there were green places here and there for everyone to enjoy. Um, the first course load for British students would normally be three courses of modules in the semester. Because of the work, special working arrangements with the program I was signed up for, I was only taking two. That way I could be sure to have enough study time to keep my grades up. If I fell behind, my student visa would be canceled and I would be sent home. Not every course was valid for the credit back in the US. Since some were too specific to the British legal or financial structure, but most of the time education was education. In any case, I had one course in technology, one in literature, and someday I would need to get acquainted to the university library, but for now I needed to get on to work. What the fuck is that wall? Do you? Oh my god. After a hard day's work, finally it was dinner time. The hostel had a dining area where everyone could eat next to the kitchen. People would order in or get gather, or could gather together to eat a group meal. With that in mind, I crept to the kitchen hoping to find something simple I could make. Hey, friends. When I entered, I discovered Angelo, Peggy, at, and Ashley. Wait, what? We're sitting around the large table, each talking about something from the platter of vegetables and noodles. Who the fuck are you? Another guy I hadn't met before was also there. That must be Mark. The one Danny said was cute. I really hope you like it. I worked hard on it. It's free food. I'll definitely like it. You make good. You, you'd make a good wife, Ashley. <laughs> you think so? Ashley flushed as Angelo laughed heartily. You belonged in the Stone Age, Angelo. What? It was a compliment. She's not mad about it. That's besides the point. That set them both off, shouting insults back and forth, Mark sitting nearby with wide eyes. I tried to figure out why a way to casually approach the, and join the group, but I wasn't sure what to do. I'd probably look bad if I just walked up and asked to eat some of their food, especially since I didn't make it. Maybe it was better to come back later and to take a peek in the fridge. I started out of the kitchen before I can make it out the door. I locked eyes with Ashley. 
Oh, look. Are you hungry? I made stir fry if you want some. I'm sure there's plenty for us. All of us. Sure. Really? Are you okay with that? Of course. Despite Ashley's assurances, it glanced at the others. Peggy and Angela were still at each other's throat, but off Mark offered me a smile and gestured to the seat next to him. I sat down nervously. Thank you. It looks really good. Ashley got a plate for me and spooned the food onto it while Mark got me a glass of water. Just can't comprehend that your way of life is totally... Maybe if you just calm down a little, it wouldn't be so. Don't mind them. They've been at it all day. Really? Yeah, it's a bit rough, but I'm sure they both mean well. It's interesting to see people with such dynamic opinions. And you guys aren't going to stop them. I don't want to get involved. I don't like to fight with anyone. I glanced at Mark, who shrugged. Everything ends in one way or another. I mean, these kinds of things are interesting to discuss, but as long as it's not directly affecting me, it doesn't have any meaning. What? What did that mean? There was an odd tension in the air. A few seconds later, I realized Peggy had stopped arguing with Angela and stood staring at Mark. How can you say that you don't care about anything when that doesn't affect you personally? Does that mean if you saw someone in pain, you wouldn't do anything to help them because it wasn't you who was hurting? Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I just mean meant that if someone... If how someone else is behaving isn't causing direct harm, or if it is just, or if it's just a theoretical concept that isn't harming anyone in practice that I can see, I won't bother with it. But theoretical concepts can hurt people, I suppose. Well, Mark seemed to consider Peggy's points for a few moments, then shrugged. I can't really be bothered. Ugh. Peggy stood and grabbed her half full plate. I can't stand people like you. She marched off in a huff. Angelo chuckled as he watched her go. Thanks for having my back, man. Angelo held out his hand for a high five. Mark looked at it with interest. Your palm is quite nice, but I wasn't doing it for you. Eh? It does seem pointless, don't you think? What? I mean, everyone dies. Life, oh my god. Life is short. I don't think you should argue so much. It's a waste of time. Angelo grunted and went back to his food. Well, uh, Mark, since you're new here, how do you like it? Um, it's well, it's very nice. Everyone's very friendly. Oh, that's sweet. What do you, don't you think, Angela? Angela grunted again. He didn't seem particularly interested in conversation anymore. Well, uh, anyways. What brought you here, Mark? Mark frowned. Uh, exploration. Oh, that's nice. Are you at uni, or did your family send you here? I don't think that's important enough to spend time talking about it. He tilted his head to the side and smiled. I don't like people prying into my past, if you don't mind. I set my fork down surprised. Did Mark want everyone to hate him, or was he seriously just accidentally pissing everybody off? Ashley, her, she, her sheets, her cheeks gone pale from nerves, anxiety, anger, nodded and picked up her plate. I'm gonna go clean up now. Uh, it was nice eating with you. Yes, I agree. Thank you very much for the f your food and conversation. I hope you can do this again. Ashley shot him a pl puzzled glance. Angela stood and handed his plate to Ashley, then lumbered out of the room. With nobody else left, Mark turned to me. So what brings you here? He almost he looked little, little, little. he seemed almost cheerful, as if some completely uh, unaware of what he'd just done. Um, did you not notice what just happened there? Hmm. What do you mean? You insulted everyone. It's nothing. What? I have not insulted anyone. You made everyone angry and uncomfortable. That's why they left. You were mean. Do you really not see it? I- but I'm not insulting people. That's- that is not what is happening. I- he- Mark frowned and shook his head. Am I- I'm leaving, yeah? And then he, like everyone else, took his plate and left. Well, that was a great dinner, wasn't it? Sighing, I finished my food alone. I ran to Brendan in the hallway. I waved to him, trying to be friendly, but he only looked at me with disgust. So much for that, then. Why are these days flying by? <laughs> Someone was knocking on my door. Hey, look, I was just making rounds to top up the loo roll. To do what? He handed me two rolls of toilet paper. Oh, thanks. There's usually some stored in the kitchen, but James won't stock too much in the case anyone nicks it. Try not to run out. Well, that would be awkward. He waited me and head 
to the next door down. What are with these awkward conversations? It was first thing in the morning and I barely woke up when I heard a soft knock on my door. You know what guys? I'm gonna end this here. We'll continue with this later. So yeah, if you want me to continue, give me a comment down below and I'll see you all later. Bye guys.